We've just started the conversation with David Sherwood. I'm David Safir. I help companies that are in trouble, basically, um, specializing in putting together cash flow systems, cash flow um, management tools. And then from there, we identify ways to increase cash flow. And one of them has always been uh, bridge loans or lines of credit. And today we're in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis, the pandemic. And so I've asked my friend David Sherwood to come on and talk to me a little bit about the truth about what's going on with lending right now and uh, if some clarity on the government loans that may or may not be available to you. So David, thank you for joining me. Um, it's great to talk to you again this morning. You bet. Thank you. Um, David, tell me about, so you're with LendBase. Can you uh, just let everybody know briefly uh, who LendBase is? Because it's not a household name and it would be good for them to know. Sure, LendBase. Uh, we started years ago um, based out of New York, started as a correspondent lender, grew into brokering, started some direct lending. Uh, we currently lend in every state. Mm -hmm. And we do have everything, but two thirds of our work is in real estate, but we do everything from even hard money to equipment, lines of credit, working capital. So we do commercial lending, everything but your primary residence, your student loan and your personal car. And so we um, are, are, are a resource for businesses and uh, professionals for, with commercial lending. Thanks. Uh, and just to make sure you are an SBA lender, is that correct? Sorry, you cut out there. What? Oh, so I just want to verify that you're a certified SBA lender. Yes. Okay, that that's wonderful. And if I remember correctly, um, you have banking relationships with a lot of different banks, and that people can apply with you, and then if they qualify, tell me how that works. So our relationship, whether we're doing a loan ourselves or we're correspondent, corresponding it or brokering it, is that we realize that most lending institutions have one credit box and one basic product that, that they're offering. Not all banks do every sort of, of lending. And so we have relationships across the industry where we're able to underwrite it, our relationships accept, accept our underwriting. And we are able to basically do it ourselves or broker it in a way that's going to end up with better rates and terms. And so we have established relationships that compensate us inside the loan, but they accept our underwriting. All right. So people might be saying, David, get to the good stuff, get to the government loans. Why is it? Why are you talking about this up front? And let me tell you, the reason I'm talking about it is because not everybody is going to be able to get a government loan either not going to qualify or they're going to run out of money. One of the two may happen. And so, or even with SBA loans, you have to find a bank that's willing to fund you. And instead of shopping from bank to bank, this kind of relationship with LendBase is the, uh, for me, the ability to go in, do an application, and then you're able to get the help with various banks, whatever it's going to work best in your situation. So, um, David, are companies still, or are, are financial institutions still lending money? Forget about SBA or the emergency loans right now. Is there still money out there for regular lending and borrowing? There is. There are some industries that are, um, that are, kind of on a pause uh, in regards to certain industries that have been really devastated by all of this COVID-19 and what's going on. And so those industries are still pausing, but you and I both know that even when we're talking about things like restaurants or those industries that have been shut down, that they're going to start up at some point and they always need capital to the game. Yep. Okay, so I think we just had a little bit of a hiccup, and hopefully it's not me.
You with me, folks? All right. Sorry about that hiccup. Um, can you hear me, David, again? I can hear you now. All right. Sorry, folks. One of the problems I'm having is, for whatever reason, my neighborhood's internet is having real struggles. And I've been told it's very, from a very reliable source at Cisco, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So, David, um, thanks for your patience, everybody. Um, so you were talking about there's certain industries that are critically affected. I'm, I'm thinking the, what, the restaurant industry? Um, hospitality, hospitality has been. Okay. And, you know, there, there's some of those that, that have just been absolutely shut down that, yep. that have been mostly impacted, yes. Okay. So, um, so there are, but there is commercial lending, as we've talked about, equity lines or borrowing against uh, real estate still is possible? Yeah, so, so we're actually having numerous lenders purchasing real estate, refinancing, pulling cash out, um, taking investment properties and bundling them in into uh, a, 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 well, just taking a lien against multiple properties. And so we're doing a number of things in real estate, but there is working capital loans you know loans up to five and ten years and then also lines of credit that we're working with right now okay and those are based upon a company's past um financial performance or projected future how do you how do you guys underwrite that the, the basics so lines of credit would be basic cash flow and past past performance but we always look at the pro forma what what are you going to use it for and what do you expect to happen so that one's kind of projection based but the working capital we we do have numerous people who are combining old debt to reduce their payments during this time and and uh, or have some money to to you know grow if if it's possible right now okay well thanks um Again, the reason I'm talking about this up front is because there's this image that lenders are shut down and that the only source of funds is the government. And it's not true. A matter of fact, as far as I know, the government hasn't lent a single dime on these programs. And David, is that right? That really no one's seen any cash yet? I have not. So in, re, in regards to the EIDL, which was the economic injury disaster loan that first came out three, three weeks ago or so, I've sent many people to the program who've registered. Mm -hmm. And then when the PPP program, when the CARES Act happened, they then offered that $10,000 um, grant or advance on top of that. And I haven't had anybody let me know that they've received funding through that yet. In fact, the program, the EIDL, explains that they're gonna to have to be underwritten to uh, verify that they have uh, sustained substantial economic injury. And doing an underwriting to find that is gonna take time to collect data and do that, and then, then to have it put into the SBA process to qualify them for that loan, it, it's gonna take more than just uh, a couple weeks. So I haven't heard anybody that's received that. Through the CARES Act, the PPP, similarly, um, most banks, and actually as far as I know today, there's only a few community, uh, community banks or credit unions that are working only with their own members, but most national lenders, we're still waiting for hmm. them to clarify how the banks are gonna get the money from the government so they can lend out the, the PPP funds, for example. So you know, if I remember correctly, um, there, there needs to be a, a pre-existing relationship with an SBA lender. Is that correct? Not necessarily. No. Okay. Um, basically, anybody can apply for the PPP payroll protection program, okay. and it could be f so. Whoever's starting to accept them, my suggestion is jump on them. I just know that right now, numerous lenders have stated clearly we're only going to work with our current customers. Okay. And so, what about you and LendBase, are you, are you guys accepting them? Are you going to? Or are you sending those? Yeah, up? we do. Oh, you do. We we are not a depository lender, so so we don't require. We're not a bank in that sense where where we require deposits, and so we have some relationships that we're working with, and they can certainly submit to us. I would say still, the fastest solution for the PPP specifically 
would be to go to an established banking relationship and see if they are accepting. If they're not, then I, I'd tell them to reach out to you and, and uh, you can hook us up and, and introduce us. Okay, that sounds good. But um, you know, pre-existing relationships are always great. And it's one of the things I've talked to people about is you get the line of credit before you need it, but okay, now you need it, so do what you can. Um, most people have a pre-existing relationship, but if you don't, like David said, call me and we can very quickly go through your situation and see if it makes sense for you and David to talk and, and we'll work together. And the reason we're doing that is because David Sherwood is absolutely flooded right now. And so I'm just helping him out by doing some preliminary conversations. All right. So if I could clar clarify yeah. something for you, David. Yeah, absolutely. On the, e on the EIDL program, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, uh -huh. So people are going to apply online and then they have to verify that they have a sub substantial economic injury okay. and then they'll be underwritten by the SBA to see if they qualify. And what we are suggesting is that you're going to make application with the EIDL. It is not a freebie. It's not a giveaway. It's a, it's a loan. It's a bonus. And what we're suggesting loan. is... Yeah, since, since we do SBA loans to the, to the SBA standards in regards to working capital and lines of credit, we would love to work in parallel with that EIDL process. And if we could get there faster, and if we could get there more efficiently to qualify them for a line of credit or a working capital loan, then at least they have a choice of accepting that or waiting for that process to play out. Because unfortunately, um, you know, we, we, we have experience with working with the government through the EIDL scenario or FEMA. It's just uh -huh. slow. And if we can work faster, we'd love to be a resource in that way. Okay. So that makes sense. Um, what happens if you, your loan comes through, they, they, they're able to get a loan through you first, but then this other one comes through two months later. Can, can they just use that loan to pay off your loan or... The, the, you know, the private loan or how would that work? What, what I've understood is that they, they say that even if you show substantial economic injury, that you may not qualify for the EIDL if you can obtain credit elsewhere. Oh. So if somebody did qualify or had their own line of credit or um, we helped them with a working capital loan, they probably will end up not qualifying because their numbers would have qualified to the SBA stand. No, 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 no. Folks, if you can hear me, I'm having internet challenges again. And I'm trying to make adjustments. And David, are you back? I am. All right, that's me again. Sorry, I went to an alternate internet source. Maybe this will be more stable. Um, so you were saying to work in parallel. And because one of the qualifications, let's make this really clear, is that these companies are not capable of getting commercial credit. Is that the summary? That's how we read it. They haven't okay. given us an exact, here's a ratio or here's exactly what that clarifies. They just say that even if a person qualifies by having substantial economic injury, they may not qualify if they can obtain credit elsewhere. That's fairly vague. So yeah. we're just saying, take it into your own hands instead of waiting a month and a half or so. Okay. Um, and then you work with SBA all the time, and so you know at least what their standard requirements are during normal times. Is that correct? We do. All right. We do. So if this was a normal situation, and that was a qualification, pretty much if you could tell, yep, you're, you can get not just with LendBase, but other commercial lenders, you qualify, you're not going to qualify for SBA emergency funds because you can get commercial loans. But we don't, we're not 100% sure yet, right? Correct. Okay. So let's talk interest rates. Um, 
there's different loan programs out there, I think two from the government. Tell me about the interest rates on those versus commercial lending. So a, a traditional line of credit right now is uh, the lowest is 4%. Um, okay. we, we typically, it's gonna be five and a half percent. It's a one to two year line of credit. Um, we happen to work with somebody that, that we broker to mm -hmm. that actually allows us a unsecured business line up to $100,000. So it's a one page application and we, we pretty much have a feel for if they'll accept it or not. So what we're telling people is, look, if, if that's the realm, if that would help your business, let's go through this process to, to apply for the 1,000 or the 100,000 unsecured business line. Now that's at six and a half percent. That's not the best rate, but it is an unsecured line of credit. So that's one option. If you want the better rate, we have to go through a full doc underwrite and uh, and then be you know basically we get to tell the story and paint a picture of what, what the business is going to do with it but we do have options of unsecured application only all right so i'm, I'm going to put in a little commentary about cash flow versus p l's so um i have been talking about for years that the cash flow and understanding it and having a good projection and knowing you're going to get cash in that will exceed the cash out is way more important than a p l and I, it's a debatable topic it's accounting theory who cares but this is what i do care about right now if you're more concerned about two and a half percent interest because it's going to hit your bottom line than you are about keeping your doors open you might want to adjust your thinking um you know this is not to be taken lightly taking any loan and you certainly won't want to take a loan if you don't feel like you have a sustainable business. But the point is, if it's going to take you two to three months to get a government loan, you could go out of business by then, possibly, versus doing a fast turnaround loan at a little bit higher interest rate that you know you're going to get. And then you see if the, if the government loan comes down the pike somewhere. So that's just the commercial for doing your cash flow management and understanding it and having a little bit less concern for your P&L. Okay, David, we're, we're 20 minutes in. Um, I, I wanna look and see if anybody has any questions. Um, I, I don't see any right now. Actually, um, I see one. Someone oh, asked, you. Uh, Jerry asked if we can do, if we can get a definite no-no list. I'm assuming that, um, well, I'm gonna make an assumption that maybe he's talking about like the PPP or the EIDL. Um, so the only, the only real no-no that I've, uh, I've been told is do not apply to multiple uh, lenders for the PPP. Don't go and apply everywhere you can. It's gonna both clog up the process and I have a feeling that that won't go well um, for you if you do. Also, they very clearly specified the criminal uh, the, the criminal repercussions if you apply for the Payroll Protection Act and then do not use that money for um, payroll. The only thing they allow you to apply for that would be your rent and utilities to keep your, your doors open since you're taking the payroll and, and only 25% of that's written off. And so there are some no-nos in regards to the, the PPP, but I don't know if Jerry's still on, but that's my interpretation of that. So, so a couple more questions are coming in. One is that the uh, EIDL is uh, 10G max. Is that right? Okay, so, so just to clarify, the EIDL loan, you can get up to $2 million as determined by the SDA SBA based on need and repayment capacity. The ten thousand dollars is specifically the 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 forgivable the possibly forgivable grant that was added to the EIDL. That when you make the application through the EIDL, it asks you if you want to apply for that that forgivable grant. So yes, there is a ten thousand dollar max on that, but the max on the EIDL loan is two million dollars. Um, so then, 
there's another one. Can borrow, borrowers have a PPP and a disaster loan? Yes, they do not uh, impact each other. And so absolutely you can. You can apply for the EIDL and work through that process and apply for a payment protection plan application to cover, and, that, and that's all forgivable, the PPP, to, to cover payroll for two and a half months and so forth. So yes, you can apply for both. Um, what about information sources? What's the best resource to understand PPA and EIDL? Well, we go to the SBA directly to their site and, and explain it there. And if you would like me to later, I'll send you a link. If they want to go and read all of the, the, the actual law and so forth, they're willing to. Uh, we'd love to be considered one of those resources, but we go directly to the SBA uh, and the, the documents that they're putting out. And if I remember, it's just sba.gov, right? Yeah, yeah, there's. Yeah, and then there's a big flash thing at the top for, you know, COVID-19 borrowing, click here, and then it's all laid out really pretty nicely for the amount of time they've had to do this. Um, so, all right, one other question that I've been having as well, if you take the 10K while applying, well, let's call it $10,000, while applying for EIDL, does that mean that's the only money that can be obtained or does it mean you can a quick pop while, while applying for full EIDL? It's the latter. Um, it is met as a quick cash infusion mm -hmm. to help you wait through the time that it's gonna take to get through the EIDL. I think that Congress realized that they ran this through the program that was facilitated by, it was like the FEMA program. Mm -hmm. not built for speed. And so when they, when they wrote the CARE Act, they said, well, oops, that's going to take too long to underwrite everybody and qualify them. So let's throw this advance in to give them a quick infusion of cash. So the latter. Okay, wonderful. You know, here's a, another question that I've been dying to find the answer to. And that is, from, this is from Juliet. Um, for the PPP, how would it work for a sole proprietor who only gets owner's draws, not on payroll? And I would include not just sole proprietors, but there's LLCs that have two or three members that they take draws instead of uh, W-2 payrolls. Anybody who's doing that, how would that work, do you know? So they've actually changed the rules a couple times on the PPP. You know, it started off as a half percent loan, the, the unforgivable portion or the portion that wasn't forgiven. Now yeah. it's one percent. And they actually have changed that a little bit. And so um, from where we were Thursday, it changed to Friday. And I, I asked my source internally if, if anything had changed today. But I do, I do understand that, um, that one of the one of the qualifiers uh, implied well it, what it said was was that no disbursements can be given until the loan had been paid back for twelve months, and so that implied if someone only paid themselves by disbursement that that might impact them so so it changed and and i'm I know if I say this and you're going to post it, it's going to be different later in the week. But but I do have a summary. I do have a summary. Uh, since you have contact with with these people, if they want to give you their their contact information, I do have a summary that addresses it because there's a couple of things that that it, it states clearly, but that have changed. And so um, it did at first allow sole proprietors to apply, and and then it, it clarified a little bit. Um, so I would say right. my last understanding was that they could. They could and do distributions. Um, I would imagine they, we, they'd want to have documentation that says, this is the way we've always done it. This is how we get paid. Uh, that's, I'm just guessing here, folks. But one of the things that has come up is doing very, very good bookkeeping with these funds. Uh, one person suggested that you set up a separate bank account for these PPP funds 
and then you it's much easier to track what's been spent out of that and that there are the qualified expenses you're spending out of that bank account um i think we're going to learn more about this as we go forward but absolutely positively you're going to need good record keeping to justify uh, getting that uh, those loans forgiven okay david we've got two minutes left Anything that I didn't ask you that you think is important for everybody to know? Actually, Jim, Jim asked a question oh, that we didn't okay. address. What is known about the qualifications okay. for EIDL versus traditional SBA? So all we know, Jim, is that they've, they've stated that it's going to be underwritten by the SBA. So the SBA is the one doing this. You cannot apply to anybody but that SBA website to, to apply for EIDL funds. We have to make assumptions that since they haven't told us that the qualify the qualification will be less, all they said was you have to show substantial economic injury. So that's why we're saying, look, let us run down the same path because we haven't been told it's going to be any different than the traditional SBA standards. So that's what our assumption is, is that you'll be held to traditional SBA standards because that's who's qualifying it. Okay. So in my mind, it's a little bit of a catch-22 because traditional SBA standards would mean that you could get a commercial loan, and they won't, um, and they won't lend to you. They're saying if if you can get a commercial loan. So we're really going to have to wait and see how this plays out over the next weeks, hopefully not months, to see what the reality is, and who's getting rejected and why, and who's getting approved and why. Is that that's what it sounds like to me. It is still a moving target, and I and I wish I had better answers, but they are not. They're not answering us because this is a direct to SBA program from right. a consumer, not from not through any other lender, and they're not answering those questions. And the problem is, you're going to find out a month and a half or two months in. Excellent. So, David, thank you for being here this morning. Um, I think it was well worth waiting a couple of days so you had that much more information to provide to us and i really appreciate the time i know you're swamped uh, again if anybody is looking for lending and wants to look at lend base and work with david sherwood he's asked me to have a quick conversation with you first to make sure that your thinking is accurate and uh, just to make sure that things are in place that it makes sense to talk to david um, please feel free. I am on LinkedIn. Ask me as many questions as you want there. David Safir, um, my, my URL is dsafir, not hard to find. Um, I appreciate your time, David, and thank you. And I'm sure you and I will be talking the next day or two. You bet. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. And stay safe, stay home, stay safe. <laughs>